there is somebody sick. Because somebody is sick, the doctor has an obligation to save him. Now, this, this obligation is not a professional one, but it's a religious obligation. He, he, he not only may do it, but in fact he must do it. He must do it. Now, that, that raises all kinds of practical questions. One of them is, for example, can the doctor ever say no? For one reason or another. Basically, and that, that was a, a, a problem that has been raised several times, seemingly because the doctor, as, as well as any other person, is under the obligation of saving a life when he can. So he can basically not, never say that he doesn't want to problems, quite recent problems, have been have arised from this point of view about doctor strikes. Can doctors strike? Even though nobody wanted really to, to get in the way of the doctors, they are also dangerous. But the, the main position is that doctors are among those very few professions that don't have a real right to strike. Or they can strike symbolically. They can make the life of the, of the government, the municipality and the patients much more difficult. But when it comes to the, to the point of giving help or not giving help, especially when it is a, 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 a question of saving a life, then the doctor has no right to abstain. And if one, if one deals with it from, from this point of view, seemingly it is not a matter of, of being in the profession formally, but of having the knowledge. If I have the knowledge, I'm expected to use it in the same way that a person that, is, that, that doesn't know how to swim is not supposed to jump into the water and rescue others. Not because there is no obligation, but because there is no need and no use in, in this particular person helping. But if a person can, then he has the obligation. In the same way, when, the, when a person is, is sick, helping that sick person is, is a matter of, of not of being hired as, as the doctor of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, uh, of a hospital, a neighborhood, or in any other capacity, but of the ability, can you help in this case? If one can, then he has the obligation, obligation to do so, which is in some way uh, part of, of, the, of a number of versions of the doctor's, doctor's oath in different countries, but it's also uh, stated basically in the same way in the Jewish version of that oath, which is called the, the oath of, of Asaf, the doctor, which is about some, somewhere a book written between sixth and eighth centuries. So uh, uh, there, there is the, the same statement about it. Now, if one say, uh, on, on the other hand, is the doctor to be paid? Usually, we, s we would say that if a person fulfills a religious obligation, he has no right to demand a payment for it. I am not supposed to get a payment for praying. I am not supposed to get a payment for doing any of the other commandments. So why should a doctor be paid for fulfilling, fulfilling a, 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 a commandment 
that is relevant in his case. Now, one of the of the of the reasons say, for 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 allowing a doctor to to be paid is is a practical one. If the doctors will never be paid, you will ne- you you won't have many doctors in the world. I mean, so so payment is the, is then considered really of giving the doctor the means to have a livelihood, to continue continue to survive or to live or to have any kind of a life, and shouldn't be uh, basically connected. To, to the to the healing that he does. On the other hand, some people would say that because there is no special obligation to study medicine, see, studying stu- when when a person studied medicine and knows how to operate, then is under obligation to use it. In, in that sense, he can never retire completely. He can be unable to perform certain, let's say, a surgery, or he may not know enough about a, a particular subject. But the person that, that has the knowledge and the ability should, should use it. On the other hand, because there is no obligation to do, to do so, to, to study medicine, one may say that, that the doctor gets his fees, not so much for the work he does, but for the knowledge he has, which is basically, basically true, uh, that it is, not the, it is not a manual job that the director is paid for, but it is a skill, a part of, 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 of acquired knowledge, and that is, that is the, the pay of the doctor, and as I say, again, this question has been discussed mostly in the, say, around the 12th and 13th centuries by certain of our medieval, medieval scholars trying to, to find the sources in the Talmud about how far and how much should be the doctor paid. On the other hand, just to add it, at least to, to help the doctors, the Talmud makes a statement, even, and this statement has again a section of law, uh, making an interesting statement, which is at least one that psychiatrists, all the psychiatrists agree, agree to wholeheartedly, and the statement in the, uh, say, in Aramaic is, Asya de Magan, Magan Shavia, a, a doctor, for nothing is worth nothing. So the doctor has to be paid. And the idea is that, that uh, say, in a case of, for example, of a person that was injured by, by, by another, that the perpetual of the crime has to pay for the doctor. And even when, as there is some doctor that, is, that wants to volunteer and do the healing, we would say that you sh- still should pay because a doctor for nothing is really worth nothing and therefore doctors should be paid. And that's, that's a, a, you know, it's not, a, again, one should see it. It is not as a religious obligation, but it is, even though it is, it is, it is Talmudic, it is, perhaps a psychological insight about how far people, people will develop or use the skills. And if there is not a overwhelming, at least a strong enough motivation, then the result will be less than optimal. 